December meeting for the Dallas-Alaska County Zoning Board of Appeals. If you have not signed in in the back, please sign in in the back. Also, if you have cell phones, please turn them off or silence them so we don't get interrupted. Let me explain how we operate so you can keep up with us in case you've never been to one of our meetings. I will call each case, each case by case name and number. The staff will come to the lectern and give us the meat of the uh, request. Once the staff has presented the request, there may be discussion or questions from board members. When we're satisfied that we understand what is being requested, then I will ask if the applicant or someone representing the applicant would like to come to the lectern and give us any additional information that they feel is pertinent. If there are multiple people here that would like to speak, we welcome you. I will ask if there's any additional people that would like to speak. Please raise your hand and recognize, come to the lectern. We will need your name and address for the record. Please give us the information that you feel like is important for us to take under consideration. There possibly will be questions or discussions among board members to whoever is at the lectern at the time. Please do not come up to the lectern multiple people bringing the same information to us multiple times. Please give it to us one time. Please give it to us as completely as you can. If you feel like something has not been brought to our attention, we welcome the information. Once we feel like we have heard from the pro side, then I will ask if there are any persons here that are in opposition or have questions about what is being requested. If there are, I need a person to come to the lecture, give us your name and address for the record, give us the information or the question, whatever you want us to take on your side. Please be aware that the only thing that we can deal with here today is items in reference to the Lyons County or City of Alabama zoning regulations as it pertains to these cases. If it gets off into an area that may be engineering or health department or other things that are not within the peer review of this board, then I will stop you and suggest that you find the proper person to bring it to. Once we have heard from both sides, we generally will render a decision here today. However, if we feel like information is lacking or parties need to talk, then we have the right in the bylaws to postpone action for 30 days until the next regular schedule is meeting. Uh, at this point, I will call the first case. It is case DAR 2019-14, Oliver Family, Timberlands, LLP. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may, before I even begin, I would like to publicly apologize to the board for not having a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I have, I am wearing many hats right now. Uh, that is no excuse. Um, but I just did not have the time. But I do want you all to know that I always try to exhaust my efforts when preparing for your meetings and anything that I'm involved in. And I feel short and I do apologize. And with that, I would like to start with, as the chairman, vice chairman stated, application BAR 2019-14. Mike Lansdale is the realtor agent for the land buyer, Mr. Olin Wooten. Mr. Wooten recently purchased a 2,000 plus acre tract from the Olive Fair. It is Mr. Wooten's intention to subdivide the west side of the Southern Railroad tracks one and two, which is approximately 281 acres. Into varying, size, into varying size residential lots, possibly ranging from five to ten acres. The parcels east of the railroad track will be 230 plus acres in size or larger. Uh, the purpose of these tracks will be for outdoor recreational use. County water and sewer can be obtained via several options. 
that were failed to Mr. Lansdale during the TRC meeting in November with county staff. Mr. Lansdale explained any of the proposed options to connect the county utilities would be an economic hardship for the new owner, Mr. Wooten. Owners, uh, therefore, are asking for variance to section 4.04.02 F, G of the UOBC. There is the nearest water sewer available from the county in relation to these lots. Very good question, sir. And if I may, I do have our county director here with me today, utilities director, Mr. Steve Salvi. If I may ask him to come up and um, answer some of your technical questions.
the parent property piece exists? That's the way it's The parent is the parent as it is. Once you start, well, once you start to cut, subdivide from it, it's no longer the same. So you're creating individual parent tracks, if you will. Okay. The lots that you're creating, they then become their own individual lots. Okay, so yeah. would it be possible for this landowner to subdivide his property into fully conforming lots, which are um, uh, more than a thousand feet away from water and sewer, and then do what he wants on those lots that are outside of the urban service area? No, ma'am, I got you. I, I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, you're saying that because the entire lot, as we see it on paper, is not uh, within the buffer area for sewer and water? Is within that the urban service area. Uh -huh. Basically, the UODC reads that if any portion of that parent track, track, excuse me, is within a thousand feet of our water or sewer right. buffer. Right. So any portion of right. it. So that's what I'm asking. If they divided it off a piece that was a thousand feet within the thousand feet and said, that's one piece of property and all the rest of this is a separate piece of property. I got you. That's a separate piece of property. That's Could not. they do what they want? Yes. Yes. Okay. So and then they're only bound to the urban service area on the pieces that are within 1,000 feet of the forest that remain. If I understand you correctly, please forgive me for repeating what I think you're saying. It sounds to me as if you're saying, if I subdivided this lot, just say it into two lots. Right. Uh, one portion was on the side right. of the 1,000 foot buffer. Correct. Can they do what they want to do? Of course they can. Okay. That portion within that buffer area has to adhere to what we're okay. doing. Okay. Okay. And there's no time frame. So um, they could do, they could divide the property into two pieces, if you will. Uh, one within 1,000 feet and one outside of 1,000 feet. And on the piece, and, and then the day after they do that, on the piece one thousand outside of one thousand, they can do what they want. Can I can I reframe what I just said to you? Because I just told you incorrectly. If they subdivide that property today, that's considered renowned. If they subdivide that property, they must adhere to what the OD requirements are. And that's the connection to the words. It does not matter if they cut it in a manner where that portion is outside of the existing boundary and this portion has some, if they cut that property today, then we are cutting that parent track. And the code says if any portion of the parent track is within. Well, that's what I'm, I'm asking about. How long does the parent track exist? Is it forever? So well, this I say that it exists as long as you do nothing to it. Once you do something to it, you're creating something new. And when you create something new, that becomes a parent within itself because it's an individual lot. Right. So, so that's the new parent. Do right. you see where we're going with this? You've got a piece of property that is 2,000 plus acres. Right. They can't cut it, they can't subdivide it, they can't do anything any with any kind of development without the subsequent lots that are being cut out, all of them have to be served by a water sewer. They can't go in there and cut out 25% of it and leave 75%. And then at a later point, that 75%, because it's outside of the, the service area, that doesn't bypass that because before that 75% piece existed, it was part of a large chunk that did touch in some way. And then we've, we've seen this before, where the water and sewer is on one side. Right, right up here in the corner, that, that, that's not fair to make them bring all the way down. Well, but that's where the code reads. Okay. So that's not, that was the clarification that I was looking for. Okay, thanks. The parent track yes. 
consist of everything from Madison Highway all the way across Oklahoma Road to um, Lineberger and Oklahoma. Yes, yes, and I got lost on your description of where the water was. I know the sewer goes all the way to all the ventures. But water, you said, goes to the pond plantation. That's right. So it does go past the swamp. Uh, no, ma'am, not that. That property, I don't believe, goes up. Uh, it, it's around behind that property, uh, uh, behind the yeah, plantation, but on the road and where the water line runs, just up to the pecan plantation. I understand. I may see it and look at it. If I can recall our conversation, um, I thought it was something to the effect of water being from this Lineberger Road down a portion, and then if we were near the Pecan Plantation subdivision going north, that I thought it maybe past weeks rose. I think it just comes up to basically up to about this hour. Basically, from the Zyrable up to where it touches their property, where it comes out to Old Pine Hill Road, is 3,800 feet. And then, if you come from the interstate down to where it touches their property, it's approximately a little over 5,000, close to a mile. Well, the clarification. The smaller lots that they're proposing to cut west of the railroad track. Yes, sir. There's no water on Clydesville Road right there. No, sir. You have sewer on that road. Yes, sir. But now that is a horse main, and it would require a lift session to be put in. And as far as the water, the water touches up close to I-75 at the very uh, up at the very point. Yes, sir. And there's no water coming down Madison Highway that would serve the larger track. You're within the buffer right at the tip of where the where the property comes around there and touches Madison Highway. That's where you're in the buffer at.
Thank you. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on behalf of this application? So, Mr. Wooten, I think, feels like the
to be able to get a well and septic tank, they're going to have to go through the health department anyway. Has the health department done any evaluation of these lines? No, sir. Not at this time. The fact that they've got, looks like two flag lots, number 13 and 14 maybe. The way you've got them drawn, and I may have to wrap the barber in on this, does the road frontage for those two lots meet specifications? It does. Thank you. And we did talk about that, Chair. Yeah. Yes, sir. Any other questions, discussions at this time? Thank you very much, Mike. We may have more questions in a minute. Thank you, Jim. Yes. Thank you. Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Uh, a variance in section 4.07.00 of 
if I, if I, if so there's still a buffer required, even if you have a chance. Yes. 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 Sir. Yes. Sir. It's the, okay, the, the, fence, the fence will allow you to decrease the width of the buffer by 50%. But the fence has to be opaque. It can't be yes. just a chain link fence. It right. has to be a chain link fence with slats or okay. solid fence. Yes. 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 Any other questions at this time? Thank you, Deborah. Yes, sir. They call you back. Yes, sir. That's cool. Is anyone here representing? Please give us your name and address and take the lecture, please. Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, my name is Dan Stevenson, and I work with Beltline Energy. Uh, our address is 154 Frog Street, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, 307. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I want to just quickly provide some background information about this solar project we're pursuing on this parcel. Um, my company, Bell Energy, has entered into an agreement with the land manager to pursue a solar project with Georgia Power under the Utilities Renewable Energy Development Initiative. If selected by Georgia Power to move forward, this project will ultimately be 10 to 30 acres in size. It would produce up to three megawatts of energy to load the utility grid. Perhaps um, we planted beneath the panels for generation and the solar project would power down completely at night. Um, depending on the ultimate size of the project, the project is expected by tax revenues of 300 to 400,000 to Lowndes County for dollars to Lowndes County over its approximately 35 year life. Um, here is a request for the variance. Um, the cause of our request for this variance is firstly to request that the portion that requires us to plant shade trees around the exterior of the solar project be removed uh, so that we will not be in a situation where shade is being created on the panels. Um, that's pretty, pretty crucial for the um, operation of the project. Secondly, we're requesting that Bell Energy be allowed to select and plant evergreen shrubs around the fence line. I mean, there won't be a chain link fence around the project. Um, requesting that Bell Energy be allowed to select and plant evergreen shrubs around the fence line that are well suited for applicable soil conditions and effectively provide a visual screen for the project. Um, so, achieving those two objectives is the purpose of this area. Did, I received a copy of the letter that was sent to the Zoning Board by one of the neighbors. Uh, it was sent to you all on November 26th. I did quickly just wanted to touch on a few of the um, items that were raised in that letter. And I want to start out by saying that we do want to be a good neighbor with this project and we be sure it's a good fit in the community. Um, we, need, that we take these concerns seriously. First point was about um, water coming off the property and erosion. And I wanted to state that prior to construction, we'll have an NPDES, which stands for National Pollution Discharge Elimination, Elimination System Permit, issued to us by the Georgia Environmental Protection Division, helping for requirement um, before we start construction of projects as far as uh, subvincents so and erosion for construction. Our contract with the landowner requires that no hazardous materials can be introduced to the soil and that all environmental laws will be followed for the project. Uh, further, our agreement with the landowner contains a decommissioning clause that requires us to remove all equipment from the property at the end of the lease. Uh, if you return the property substantially to its current condition, this project will be constructed using silicon photovoltaic panels, which is the primary technology used for solar reef projects, as opposed to a less common cadmium telluride solar panel. So if you clear the panels in the project um, as a whole, will not contain cadmium elements. Um, and lastly, we have seen no evidence that solar projects lower property values on adjoining adjoining parcels. Um, Noise generated by the inverters on these projects is 58 decibels, which is noise level summer between a quiet library and a mobile 
conversation. Um, he had the distance between the inverters and the neighboring residential dwellings. Uh, we don't expect the inverters to be out of from the neighbors' dwellings. And that, that concludes my prepared remarks and I can answer any questions. Is there any more um, you just stated that you were going to put a chain link in. Yes, and we just heard Ms. Tollett say that an OPEC fence was required. So I think the way, so the way the code reads is that if it's an OPEC fence, there's less uh, vegetative buffer material required. Mm -hmm. um, and so what, what we're proposing is a chain link fence and then planning a vegetative buffer that is uh, our specific language that we're requesting to do this to know. A single note of one gallon evergreen shrubs? Yes, ma'am. Well, I can tell you that a gallon shrub will not take the place of an opaque fence. I mean, you can go to any nursery and look at any shrub that's on the market, and a gallon size shrub is not going to be a filled out bush. So, yes, yes. So, so we're asking for you provide the single row one gallon of green shrubs, um, place every six feet that will grow in specific project location soils to a height of six to eight feet within three meters. So, point taken that. All right. How tall are these um, solar panels? They're less than ten feet tall. Okay, and I've got two or three more questions. Um, how many exactly? How many solar panels are you proposing on this thirty acres? Um, it, it's all, at this point in the process, we don't know exactly how large the project will be. You know, exactly. there'll be a the ten thirty per acre range. Max and minimum. I, I'd have to do that. Do you want that? And really, it depends on the panel type. Um, I mean, it will be hundreds of panels. But could it be thousands? Uh, it could be over thousands. Sure. I don't know. Uh, do you more precise than that? I'll give you that. Do you want that? Okay, one more question for now. Sure. Um, you said that you don't want shade trees. With 30 acres, and I've been out there. I don't know how many of my colleagues have been out there, but I've been out there an hour and a half's worth. Okay. And so I can tell you this is a lot of residences. To the south, there are some other And I don't know if there's anybody in this room that would want to be eyeballing that. These are in their front yards, not their backyards. Okay. Um, why? Couldn't you leave the shade trees that are there on the perimeter of this 10 to 30 acres to block, it's already established, to block the view of what these people are going to have to look at every day. And I, I would have to see some facts in writing about whether it has a negative impact on property values. I don't think you would want to look at it. Based on what I've seen. Okay. So, for this circle back to the tree height, typically on this, the trees on the south side create a shadow that's roughly two times their height. Um, so, I don't have tree measurements for all the trees. I know it's primarily a common orchard currently. Um, so, if the trees are 50 feet tall, it's 100 feet, the shadow would be able to stay off. So, that's, that's part of the concern is that if shade trees are required, then there's going to be a portion of land that cannot be used for this solar purpose. Uh, it's you know, basically creating unusable land. So we feel we can create the visual screening of okay, this requirement on that shade trees we can use shorter shrubs to get there. And there's a pretty um, stand of are those going to come down? Well, that, that will be my question. Where on the property specifically are you talking about installing these? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We can share. 
that it is restricted to Those that 30 acre parcel, yes. and that it would cease upon removal of this yes. particular We can't Somebody do that.
so that it's relatively new to us. Uh, I said, I'm going make They have some legitimate concerns. They have some legitimate questions uh, that I don't personally have the answers to. Uh, and what I do want to address is a couple of concerns that you voiced. Because the question that you asked that, that oh, Mr. Dan did not cover. One of the issues is the proposal is just that. It's a proposal. It is contingent upon the feasibility, financial feasibility with Georgia Power. Now, it's uh, Beltline's job to come up with a plan that can show Georgia Power that they can produce energy and produce it um, at a relatively low cost so they can afford to buy it. Now, that's what they're trying to do. And in order to do that, they have to do studies, they have to do engineering, and they have to do feasibility sketches. The reason Mr. Dane cannot give uh, you a definite answer as to how many panels will be there is because until the electrical line study has been done, we don't know how many, um, I guess it's megawatts, those power lines down Wellington Lane can contain. Okay? That's the reason there's a scope of 10 acres to 30 acres. Um, so to tell you exactly how many panels will be there, it's an impossibility at this moment because they really don't know. I, I support his answer because I, I just know how that works. To do a feasibility study and to do an accurate proposal, there has to be more work done. Okay, um, now, on that particular track, it's cut out, going to the south from the parent track. That entire track uh, is approximately 50 acres. Approximately 50 acres. Now, to the southernmost portion of that track, which you may not be able to see on your map, uh, there is uh, a land agreement where uh, I am selling a portion of that track uh, to my neighbors to the south. Um, the voluntary sale, we've been excellent, good neighbors for many, 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 many years. Uh, no reason to stop that now. We're still good neighbors. We just have some issues that we're working on. But uh, my point is this. Depending on what Georgia Power agrees to, if at all, if the reduction in the acreage goes down from 10 acres, there is no reason whatsoever that that 10 acres wouldn't be on the north end of that cutout track. Number one, it would be closer to the proposed substation that we put there. Okay? Uh, but until that proposal is done and Georgia Power makes their decision, we don't know. So as it stands right now, I'm standing in front of you and telling you, I don't know whether I have just leased 10 acres or 30 acres. I'm telling you that Beltline has an option to lease a minimum of 10 and a maximum 